What's up guys, Skater Rampage here. So today I'm going to be giving you my opinions and thoughts on the whole Funko Pop price increase on pretty much all Funko Pop sizes. So let's check it out. Alright guys, so today we do have some Funko news, but not your typical Funko Pop news in terms of where we show new pops and everything like that. We are going to be talking about something that is a little bit more serious, and it does have a lot of collectors kind of peeved off right now, uh, purely because some of these increases are a little bit higher than we were kind of expecting. So again guys, I just kind of wanted to remind you this is not going to be your typical Funko news video. In this video, we're going to talk about all the Funko Pop price increases. I'm going to tell you guys my opinion on the situation and kind of like tell you guys my thoughts and how I feel about certain things. and certain things that are good, certain things that are bad, and just kind of like the whole situation in a whole. Now, the only thing that I will ask that you do is just kind of listen through the whole video. Some people like to make their opinions and judgments based off like one-fourth of the video or two-fourths of the video, but all I ask is that you just kind of listen to all of my thoughts and all of my reasonings for the certain things that I'm saying. In this video, am I going to be 100% honest? Yes. Am I going to be 100% on Funko's side? No, not at all, honestly. Now, the reason I am saying those things is purely because some people have the misconception that just because I'm an advocate for Funko doesn't mean I can't be against Funko in certain cases, which is not the case at all. I'm going to fully express my opinion on the channel regardless of what the situation is just because that's how I've always been and I've been 100% honest with you guys all the times in terms of my opinions. Some situations are a little bit more touchy, some are a little bit more lighthearted, but at the end of the day, I'm going to give you guys my full opinion on the situation and we're not always going to do great, you know, unboxings or Funko news and happy subjects on the channel, unfortunately. 90% of the time, but that 10% of the time we're gonna have to talk about some real things. Now guys, let's jump into the actual video and everything I wanna talk about. So the first thing that I do kinda of wanna reiterate is Funko's original update message in terms of this pop price increase. So it says an announcement from Funko, as we navigate through the current global supply disruption, we'd like to thank all of our customers for your understanding and flexibility. Funko has worked diligently to minimize the cost to avoid price increase for over uh, five years, basically. Unfortunately, due to the ever-increasing transportation and manufacturing costs, Funko will be increasing the cost of all 3.75 inch uh, vinyl pop figures starting November 1st, 2021. Thank you for your continued support during these unprecedented times. Now, I really think that Funko forgot the little disclaimer or the other half of the sentence where they we're going to raise prices on things such as art series 10 inch deluxe moment slash towns and funko soda but don't worry i'm here to report that news for you so if you were not made well aware of this by now, with it kind of circulating all over Instagram, Facebook, and everything like that, and Twitter, I guess, four-inch Funko Pop vinyls were not the only things to actually increase. We actually did see increases on art series going from $25 to $30, and this actually all comes from Funko Shop. We also did see 10-inch slash jumbo size pops go from $30 to $35, all the way up to $40 now. Then we also did see Pop Deluxes go up from $25 to $30, Moments slash Towns from $30 to $35, and Funko sodas from 12 to 15. And then of course your original Funko Pop 4 inch vinyls from $11 to 12. Now some of these increases are genuinely kind of understandable and genuinely kind of affordable and they make sense and they're really honestly not that bad in terms of you know the common going from 11 to $12. At the end of the day that's just a dollar. That's really not that big of a deal. You're spending a little bit more in the long run like it's really only if you look at the long run does it seem like a lot. In terms of like short term, if you really only buy like five pops a month, that's an extra five bucks you're spending, so it really isn't that much. But art series from $25 to $30, art series in general were just kind of like an original line that was a really, really great concept with what they were doing with the Target Star Wars ones that turned into Funko kind of cheaping out essentially and hiring their own artists rather than outsourcing and then coming up with these just horrible designs for art series. It's literally one of their worst lines and I do not understand why, um, why they continue with it. And then of course they did throw on the 10 inch hard stack to raise that price of it, you know, of their Funko Shop exclusive version. So you have a, reg a regular $15 exclusive on the Funko Shop, throw in a hard stack or throw it in a hard stack and now they can charge that $25 price point. And honestly, those hard stacks probably don't cost them more than a dollar to make each. So that's really where they're capitalizing, actually raising the price with a plastic protector included in that. And the point I'm trying to make here guys is $25 was already a really high price point for these art series that not not a lot of people really like. Do they sell out most of the time? Yes. But most of the people that are buying them are most likely completionists at this point or just buy them to resell to other people who may like the style. I'm not saying that people don't like the style, I'm just saying it's easily one of their most hated lines. Like, 
seriously. So for it to have a $5 price increase for genuinely no reason, I'm very confused on that one. It went from 25 to 30 and people already didn't like the $25 price. So all this is really going to do is discourage more people away from the art series line, which I guess in turn is a good thing. Maybe they'll stop it. I don't know. <laughs> now another one I did personally have an issue with and I didn't really understand the price increase was the actual Pop Deluxe slash Pop 6 inch pops. Now, I have two really, really good examples in terms of uh, Pop Deluxe slash 6 inch pops. So here is the Aang Pop Super here. And you, as you can see, that is a really, really big figure. It has a ton of details and definitely worth the you know $25 it originally was at, now increased to 30. However, you do have this new exclusive Nezuko here that is the same price now. It's an exclusive and it's literally half the size, <laughs> you know? It's half the size. This thing is so tiny out of box, it's not even funny. You could almost call this thing a four inch vinyl, to be honest, if you put it on its side. You could literally almost, to call this a six inch deluxe style pop is kind of insulting, to be honest, because you get more box than you actually get figure. And this seems to actually be a reoccurring thing with a lot of the six inch pops. We actually just had it happen with the, um, the new Doctor Strange Supreme NYCC exclusive. I heard some people were saying Tiamat, the NYCC exclusive as well, was a little smaller. And it's just kind of crazy. You're getting more box than you actually are getting figure, and then they're upping the price and calling it a Pop Deluxe, when really, a lot of these are actually 4-inch vinyls, just slightly bigger and advertised as a 6-inch Deluxe Pop. Now, 10-inch Pops, honestly, at $30 for the price point, it really wasn't that bad. You get double the size, essentially, of a 4-inch vinyl, and it's really cool to have 10-inch Pops. However, they take up a lot of space, so a lot of people are discouraged from buying them in general, and now with them being up to $40, this is just going to make people be more and more picky in terms of which 10-inch pops they buy, because $40 is a lot. You know, especially if they have a chase chance, you're spending $40 per pop to actually try to get, uh, you know, after that chase chance, and that Superman Walmart exclusive with the chase variant to it. Most people who do collect 10-inch pops are going to be paying $5 to $10 extra per 10-inch pop, especially if you're a completionist. That really sucks. Now, pop moment slash town honestly some of those pop moments and towns actually do have a lot of detail to them so I can kind of understand this price increase at being $35 it is still kind of high honestly I feel like $35 should be the con exclusive price and $30 should actually stay as the original you know uh, pop moment slash pop deluxe but Typically things like this, like the Naruto vs Sasuke or the Tanjiro vs Rui, they have a lot of detail in them. They're incredibly made pops, so I can really understand the price point at $35. That's really not that bad in terms of, you know, in comparison to some of these. Now this price increase actually did bother collectors the most, and that was Funko Sodas, going from $12 to $15. Now, Funko Sodas are probably Funko's most successful line right now, next to their, their original Funko Pop Vinyl, 4-inch. Uh, However, I really feel like they're taking advantage of that popularity and raising it three dollars per unit to maximize their profits which i understand it's a company they have to make money let me make that expressively clear that they're a company and they're in it to make money they're not just in it for the fans because most companies are that way however raising a product from 12 to 15 dollars is really really high especially when most people buy cases of sodas by the six to guarantee themselves that chase and they're already limited to like most most of the time they're limited i think the highest limited thing is like twenty thousand pieces for these 10 to twenty thousand pieces usually and if you're buying a case of six to actually get after that chase you're actually spending an extra $18 per case and that really adds up in the long run and this actually does bring me to my next point guys as a soda is now more expensive than your common Funko Pop figure and it's the same price as a Funko Shop exclusive. And the really crazy thing about Funko sodas now costing more than your original four inch vinyl is that they cost more and have half the detail and are smaller. And I understand that they are a different type of figure. They're a smaller type of vinyl figure and they have their certain appeals to collectors in terms of not actually being the style of Funko Pops, but literally if that's the best way I could put it, you're paying more for something that already has a pop variant out and you're getting literally half the detail. And that's crazy to me. That's like so mind-blowing and baffling to me. Now, another crazy thing that you might not have noticed about all of these price increases in terms of Funko not even mentioning them in general, other than the four-inch vinyl at a dollar price increase, was that they actually did increase in-stock items, which is really weird because Funko as a company was only doing this to combat the price increases in terms of shipping, materials, production, and in general. So in theory, guys, all of these new price increases should be applying to the new production of newer pops, not the current ones that were already up for sale 
sell in the Funko shop and they just kind of change them overnight. A big issue with this price increase, other than actually us having to pay more as a consumer, is that the fact that Funko's appeal is fun and affordability. But affordability is slowly, slowly going out the window with all of these increases, and I'm sure more increases in the future are inevitable. And this does beg the question that I can probably answer for you guys is that since we're paying more per pop design, would that mean that the quality of the figure is going to go up? Would that mean all of the paint mishaps, the mass production of these, all of the errors and everything like that would stop happening and we'd get a more higher quality figure out of all this extra money they're making? The answer to that question is no. I'm pretty sure everything is going to stay the exact same other than the price is increasing. However, I will give Funko their props. In the last decade, they have significantly improved their designs of figures. Like, the design for certain figures, the design for certain lines, and the quality and materials that they're using now are so much better compared to the original 4-inch pops and the original designs that they had, you know, a decade ago. So I will give them their props there, and I'm really hoping it continues to improve as time goes on. Now one thing with this actual price increase that I'm really hoping happens is that they actually do go back to the original 2D art on the actual box design, instead of this crappy 3D art that nobody literally nobody likes. Unless you really don't notice the difference, which I've seen a few people talking about that, so let me point that out for you uh, really quick. So you see Naruto here, you see the art style here, and then you see how it's 3D printed on the box. You can definitely notice a quality difference, and this looks so much better than this. So really, really take a look at that for a couple seconds here. You guys can definitely tell the difference in terms of quality and the actual box art style. And originally, guys, they actually did start doing 3D art on boxes purely because it was cheaper to do. That's literally why they did it. During the pandemic, they did that because it was cheaper to do and they had less staff. They couldn't afford to continue with the 2D art because it was more expensive to put on the boxes, so they changed the 3D art a cheaper option. So now that they're making more money per pop, will they actually go to that original design? Who knows? Now the biggest question that I'm sure people want answers to is that, is this price increase here to stay? In my opinion guys, yes. I really think the price increase is here to stay, and I think we're going to continue to have to pay more per pop in the future, like I said, inevitably when the prices increase even more. So yes, this price is here to stay. Another question I saw a lot of people talking about was that, is this going to affect Comic-Con prices? Now I did have a little bit of thought on this uh, situation here, is that they pushed a lot of these con pops way out. You know, we have three different Funko events coming in the next few months. They originally had con prices at $15 a pop for the four inches, and then obviously the price is different uh, per design and per size. Now this begs the question, will Funko pops go from $15 to $20 for Comic-Con? I really, really think they will or at least maybe like an $18 price point or something like that. I really feel like they're gonna go up. If they don't, more the merrier, and I'm gonna be very excited if they stay at that $15 price. Will Funko Shop exclusives eventually go up as well? Probably. I really wanna say that Funko Shop exclusives and Comic-Con Pops are eventually gonna go up to $20 per pop. And this makes sense because they're increasing the prices on everything, so why not increase the price on Con Pops? Now, I'm just purely speculating there, guys. We won't fully know until Funko actually does reveal a new Comic-Con price in terms of the new SDCC event coming at the end of this month, the new rumored New York Comic-Con that's happening um, in December, as well as LACC Comic-Con that's happening December 2, and Emerald City Comic-Con that's happening December 2. I believe there's like multiple events happening in December. It's gonna be a big month. And again, guys, I would really like to reiterate the fact that I understand that Funko is a business. They're in the business to make money. They're a company. They have to make money to continue pushing out the products that we know and love. I just truthfully think that some of these price increases were a little unnecessary and it really just comes down to the company wanting to make more money than they are you're doing. And again, I fully understand that, but you can't continue to raise prices and keep the same customer base because you're going away from the actual fun of Funko and going more into how much can we put in our pockets from our consumers. Now, the last point I do wanna make in this video, guys, is that you're gonna have a lot of people saying, oh, well, if you can't afford the products, then you shouldn't collect. Or if a dollar to $10 increase really affects you that much, you shouldn't be collecting. To say, just because somebody makes a certain amount of money, they're not allowed to be a collector. Just because they can't afford something that you can afford on a regular basis makes them not a real collector. And that they should exclude themselves from actually purchasing Funko products purely because the company raised the prices out of their price range. Just because you make a certain amount of money or have more pops than someone or can afford more pops than someone, 
doesn't make you a better collector than anyone else. It doesn't matter how many Funko Pops you have. It doesn't matter how much money you have to spend on Funko Pops. At the end of the day, this is a fun community and it should be that way. You shouldn't discourage someone from collecting a product purely because they might not be able to afford as much as you can. Now I've been collecting this product for about four years and I've been making YouTube videos basically on Funko products as long as I've been collecting just about. And obviously by now, if you don't know that I love the product and I love collecting it and I love making content on it and I'm passionate about it, then I don't know what to tell you. I love what I do. I love the fact that I can and I appreciate all of you watching. So it's not about the fact that I want to stop collecting. It's not about boycotting Funko. It's the fact that they just need to actually hear and listen to the fans sometimes in terms of some of these price increases are a little much. Like, they shouldn't have happened in the first place. Oh, and for anybody wondering about the aftermarket in terms of resellers actually selling this or what aftermarket prices might look like in terms of value later on, Yes, value is going to inevitably go up because if you're paying more for a product, they're obviously going to sell it a little bit higher to get that original profit margin. So yeah, in terms of after resale value and after market value, I'm assuming it's only just going to go up from the original prices. So there's good aspects to this. There's good, bad aspects to it. If you're a value collector, it's cool because your products are going to be worth more, but you had to pay a little bit more for them. So really, is it worth more? Who really knows? You know, it's just a whole thing you could fully dive into. There's a billion angles you could look at it. But at the end of the day, guys, some of these price increases are crazy. All right, guys, so that's everything I have for you on this situation. If you guys enjoyed this video or if you guys agreed with my opinion, comment down below. If you guys disagreed, let me know and let me know why. Don't just dislike the video and then just move on. Like, let me know why you disagree with certain things I'm saying. I would love to have a healthy debate down below. Like, honestly, I would. I love talking to you guys. I love seeing your point of view on things. And honestly, I want to hear from you guys. So comment down below on what you think about the situation. Do you think it's not that big of a deal? Do you think the price increases are justified? Do you think the opposite? Let me know your thoughts. I want to hear from you guys. If you just want to say hi, you don't even care about this video and you just want to say hi, say hi. I would love to say hi to you guys. Anyways, guys, that's everything for this video. I want to say a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much for the continued support. I really do appreciate and love you guys for it. If you guys want to check out the Patreon, the link is always down below. There are a lot of fun things going on over there, guys, and we even have a Patreon only Discord, which is a lot of fun. And a lot of news is shared in there, so make sure to check that out. I also want to, I guess, make sure to check out the Facebook group. It's buy, sell, and trade, and you can make a ton of friends, as well as be following my social media, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok all at Skittle Rampage. All right, love you guys. See you guys in the next one. See you guys later. Bye.